technical conveyor system availabilities from your recent projects? Okay. We have one question. What, what are typical conveyor system availabilities? And I, I'll touch on that just a bit in regard to the uh, ESAT access project. We, we actually have good uh, information and documentation on that project, and it, it had a 95% plus availability for that conveyor system. And that was a complex conveyor system uh, with uh, two PBM conveyors and uh, fixed length conveyor, vertical conveyor, overland conveyors. I, I'll go into more detail on that. But to answer your question, we're always in the 90% the availability for the conveyors. One of the compliments that we got from the East Side Access Conveyor was that the conveyor system was always ready to run. Now, uh, we have the results from uh, the poll on the poll question, and uh, it looks like primarily everyone consults equipment manufacturers, and uh, I, I guess I would agree with that. You go to the manufacturers of equipment to decide on what, uh, what to actually do. Thank you for uh, everyone for submitting your answer to that question. One of the things that, that has been done recently to increase the availability and efficiency of the belt conveyors is variable frequency drive. The, the variable frequency drive uh, in conjunction with the PLC system uh, has allowed the systems to achieve the availability rates that they are today. And I'll get into more detail uh, in regard to that, but they have pretty much, much made the hydraulic systems that were available in the past for giving a smooth acceleration of, uh, of the belt. They, they have made those systems obsolete. Also, we use the VFD drives for the main drive, the booster drive. We put the VFD system on the vertical conveyors. On on all of the conveyors, we equip with a, we recommend the vertical frequency drive. Even on the short conveyors that were used at the east side access, we put variable frequency drive, which allowed them to speed up or slow down the system to turn it depending on the advance rates of the, the PBM and whether they were running one machine or two machines. When you slow the system down, you on a belt conveyor, you, uh, you slow the belt speed down. You're not cycling your belt as many times, so you're not wearing out your components as quickly. Your, your belt wipers, your belt covers, uh, all of the parts of the system is less wear. And one of the things that is, is a true advancement and has given not only the contractor but uh, Robbins' as manufacturer uh, a means a better means of supporting and understanding what is going on with the system is the PLC monitoring system. And we, we've added this and are supplying this on every system that we do now. This system uh, allows you to have a screen to feel, see real time what actually is happening, and you can also record what has happened. One of the difficult things with a belt conveyor, especially your long conveyors, is what took place. Uh, you can go back with the PLC program and see, all right, where was the fault? What, what happened? Did the booster trip out? Did we have a pull cord that was pulled? Ooh. You can 
also use the system to balance out the drives when you have a multiple drive system with the, the PLC system and DFDs. The drive motors will be balanced within uh, 45 amps of each other, which is a significant improvement over the hydraulic systems that we had in years past. With the PLC system, it, it also allows us to be a programmer, can be la allowed access to the PLC so that we can make changes or monitor the system remotely. We did a lot of service work for the Eastside Access Project remotely, directly from our office, which was a true advantage. You don't have to wait for somebody to come on site to take a look to see what the problem is or to make a change. You can just do it through the system. Another advantage is with the PLC uh, or the pull cord system. Uh, the pull cord system in conjunction with the PLC allows you to know what pull cord is pulled, has tripped where in the system. In years past, uh, there were a number of times that I was on tunnels that were very long. Uh, for reference, the, the Boston Harbor Tunnel. You had nine miles of conveyor there. With that system, you would only know that there was a, a pull cord fault. So then you would spend time riding up and down the tunnel trying to find which pull cord had the red flag tripped on it. And you would have to physically go find that pull cord and reset it before you could start the system. When you had nine miles of conveyor, that could shut the system down for uh, even hours. With the systems that we provide now, you can quickly look and you can see what full cord is pulled and where is that full cord located so that you can get somebody quickly to that area to see what the problem is and correct it. We talked briefly about the belt storage cassettes. The belt storage cassettes that were supplied in the years past had hydraulic tensioning cylinders on them, equipped with a hydraulic power pack. These units were, were not as efficient as the units that we are providing now. Now we provide a unit with a winch. This winch is equipped with a constant tension motor, which utilizes a VFD to provide constant tension. So it, it maintains uh, the tension during running and startup. You can also set that tension for higher tension during startup and then during running it can drop the tension down. These units have they they work very well, no little to no maintenance and provide uh, constant tension that doesn't fluctuate as much as you would have seen with a hydraulic unit. As we touched uh, briefly before, the advancing tailpiece, this is the piece of equipment that is mounted on the backup. The advancing tailpiece that we are showing here is one that is crown mounted. We provide the two different types, one to crown mount the system, the other one is to mount the system on the side of the tunnel, normally about the spring line. The advancing tailpiece is mainly there to allow you to insert the carrying idlers in the system as it as the belt is running. The belt in the system that you see right here, the return belt is underneath the steel enclosure here. The carrying belt is above in the steel enclosure here. So allow
allows you a window for the tunnel hand to install the carrying idlers. There's normally two people that are assigned the duties of installing the belt structure and uh, installing the carrying idlers into the system. Uh, these two people will also have other duties. The conveyor system doesn't totally consume their time during mining operations. One of the things that we've developed here at Long Air Docks is patented curved idlers. These idlers allow you to negotiate horizontal curves in in the tunnel. These idlers self-adjust depending upon the tension and the load on the conveyor belt at the time. No other manufacturer supplies this type idlers. Other manufacturers supply fixed idlers with, that are super elevated through the curves. And what these idlers do, if you see uh, here, this is a standard carrying idler full volume capacity. And one of the things that for tunneling applications, we normally provide a wider belt width that in normal conveyor applications has a much greater volume capacity than what we're actually going to be using for a tunneling conveyor. So the volumes uh, of material that you're going to be seeing when you're actually at a project when you have, uh, as is shown here, a 36-inch carrying idler with a capacity of 800 tons an hour rock with a belt speed of 600 feet a minute or 3.2 meters a second, you'll see the volume would be small. It's going to be down in this area. And the reason for that is we're taking a relatively narrow belt width and we're taking a very long length. We want to use standard components and we need a wider belt width for the belt string to be able to take these belts to, to lengths up to, to nine miles. But back to the carrying idler itself. This carrying idler pivot, depending upon the volume load that is on the belt and the tension that is on the system. The carrying idler here is shown at its, its maximum super elevation which is 20 degrees. And you see when you go to maximum elevation, you have a relatively small capacity. But you will not see this idler in this position when you are conveying material. As the material load, if a fully loaded belt comes into this area, the idler is going to rotate back down into this position. When it is at its maximum angle would be when you have very high tension and no material on the belt. So spillage is, doesn't occur through the curved section because the idler will rock back down into a lower position as is shown here. The other suppliers, when you use idlers that are fixed super elevation, your belt is going to want to, to climb when it is high tension, no material on it. So with the fixed idlers, you what is done is you calculate what is the medium between